Thabo Mbeki, former president of South Africa. The world has seen some influential presidents over time, and South Africa, has unfortunately taken the worst leap of this faith in their presidency selection skills, besides those rulers who probably manipulated the voting process in their favor against opposition parties. Former President Thabo Mbeki was the first president after his complete opposite, Mr. Nelson Mandela who was actually the grandfather of the nation, not literally but in a sense that a man 95 years old would have been older than most and to have led the generation that other several generations are led by, responsible for freedom that South Africans are able to enjoy today by the abolishment of the apartheid era. The man after him, Mr. Thabo Mbeki who reigned for president, tried to be his equivalent and failed hopelessly in that attempt. South Africa understands that he tried to do something of an extreme attempt to uplift the country's security and going to great lengths to upgrade the country's counter-leverage aspects and army mediums. The downfall here in this attempt though is that Mbeki has, by his mismanaged action, spent billions of the South African taxpayers' money into the purchase of advanced weaponry to enhance South Africa's rather outdated defense force since the 70s and 80s. Mr Mbeki has done this while only deputy president under Nelson Mandela and the worst part is that when he eventually officially became inaugurated as president, he never made any real changes. Somewhat of a boring inactive ghost in the president office, office. Robert Mugabe, President of Zimbabwe We can give this man one shining accolade of being one of the longest standing presidents in office and as far as Zimbabwe is concerned, everybody is a millionaire. But to the shame that it isn't actually worth what a real million is. Currency imbalance and value disruption of the Zim dollar has been primarily the outcome of Mugabe's extreme mismanagement and corruption ways which his infamous 4.8 looking as some would describe him, President Robert Mugabe is definitely one of the top worst world leaders, seeing that in his 36-year-long presidency CD, is proven to be nothing more than selfish, incompetent to some arguable global scale levels, ruthless as well unfair and unjust to the Zimbabwean people has taken an oath to serve in throughout almost four decades of being president, the world would have expected Zimbabwe to be one of the top African countries seeing as how much of positive development could have been done during that time. It's to no surprise though, that a man who could multiply his power to last that long would turn ruthless by the status of his power and influence built up over those years which eventually led to the country's downfall in currency, infrastructure and the chain of other essential things that determines the growth of any country. This is to nobody's surprise as it has actually been predicted and anticipated that if a leader who claimed to be the best candidate to run a country like Zimbabwe for so long couldn't care less about the people in it, and economic stability, the country was heading here, it's only that we see it now. Zimbabwe is somewhat non-recoverable from the amount of losses as well as to the extent of how low it's dropped, despite being rich in diamond and other vital resources that makes the world go round. Round. Jacob Zuma, current president of South Africa. Apart from the apartheid oppressed and governed presidents that South Africa has presided over the years since its modern existence, there came about a man named Jacob Zuma. Now here is an extreme activist but ironically and more amusingly not in the sense of making a real change as other normal activists would. I called him an activist due to his famous demeanor of being a highly active person who calls himself president. Mr. Zuma can be found dancing cheerfully singing his famous Amshini Wam song trademark to his exclusivity at almost every state of the nation address appearance has made. The song has sparked outrage amongst white South Africans, especially and has infuriated other serious politicians as the racist song simply means shoot the pink skins. In not only my opinion, but backed up by a world spread of others too, a president that sings and encourages as well as instills a legacy of other wannabe pop idols in South Africa, to sing songs of murder upon a specific race, may be a leader but not one that sane-minded people would follow, unless they are barbarians. Due to the years of when he belonged to the ANC and manifested in his presidency campaigns, the country knew that he is too much of a haze craze to lead the country and they were right as it's now apartheid in reverse. 
somehow he has managed to gain as many votes as possible and to South Africa's shock, he became president today. Jacob Zuma is also a sex god to some women as a president with six wives not counting the amount of unnamed women who has been accused of and has admitted to having illicit sexual relations within some counts of rape charges too. It's now clear how South Africa's tax money is distributed when it's not spent on the well-being of uplifting the economy. Jacob Zuma is a cherry on the top of the world's worst leader cake. Muammar al Gaddafi. While Muammar al Gaddafi isn't into the funny business in his politician reign, he most certainly is one of a highly egotistical leader and a member who represents more of the self rather than all else. Was a Libyan revolutionary and dictator for more than 40 years, four freaking decades? And most certainly tops our eight president, Robert Mugabe in years of sitting in the political department, but with the slight twist of him actually making a positive difference in the economy here and there, sometimes when he felt like and no doubt did it with ultimate pioneering leadership. The flip of this leadership coin in terms of where Gaddafi is concerned however is that in the times when he hasn't been using his leadership skills to bring about positivity and economic growth. He has yielded the same tenacious power in the direction of something much more of reckless and careless ventures. A true leader doesn't have ulterior motives which makes Scottifee one of the worst world leaders also. With the reputation of being chief and commander of Libyan armed forces, he has certainly deserved the title seeing that he has long plotted the exposition of King Idris I who he successfully managed to eventually dethrone eventually which meant the rise of his own power in Libya. His rise to power would have been his finishing move at which he could use to manipulate things and direct it for personal gain of interest as a disguise from his people as though he's earned whatever he desires to take from the economy because of his history and efforts in fighting for it. A hypocrite we can call him for this. Julius Sulema, South Africa's youth leader. With a reputation of disruption, rowdiness, everything that spells unethical behavior, utter disrespect, and with a never-ending list of all things pathetic, this man, Julius Malema has carved a huge sign on his shiny bald forehead as being South Africa's biggest political clown. The type of man that is so silly in his peat brain thinking capacity that would probably respond to a question of, what country is next to USA? With his answer being, USB. He has been dubbed as the government of clowns and not for no reason. He has somewhat of a great ability though, to cause hectic havoc in the political arenas and more especially with his famously known racist attack of vulgarity on the white videographer and a live television broadcast. Some guts he had, but no brain, no mind, no conscience and definitely where intelligence never existed. Apart from his clowny appearance and style of dressing which is the total opposite of a normal white-collar politician, this guy certainly developed his very own style with a military-styled side cap and other funny kinds of clothing suited to his legacy of clowns throughout South Africa, who think it's cool. South Africans and critics have been left baffled by whether the hat is to cover his shinny bald empty-minded head or to pose as a commando in the youth league. Either which one doesn't suit his comedian role in politics anyway. Boohoo Julius. The main concern of Julius Malema as a youth leader is that the youngsters of South Africa, immature and childish as they are, are forced to believe that he is a great leader of the nation and for some reason seem to follow his ways and even imitate him, dress as shabbily as him and have developed the same arrogant attitude that he has also. Although Julius still driven Mulema has a surprisingly strong influence on his supporters nationwide. His behavior will no longer be tolerated as it's somewhat hilarious and brave also to have physically assaulted another politician on security cameras. He can be classified as a hilarious politician legend in South Africa by the constant display of such stupidity on a high magnitude beyond even his comprehension. Henshin. Islam Karimov President of Uzbekistan. As the second name suggests, and with a sounding similar to when you think of Aftamat Kalashnikov, AK 47, a deadly machine gun, is somewhat of a direct comparison we can give to Islam Karimov. Being in presidency since the start of the 90s, and it seems to bring about a call of question as to how he has managed to win the presidential elections of extending his term in the year 2000, and the best part was that he has been unopposed. 
The only battle here was against himself and maybe some others, who were mysteriously stumped down before his seat has been taken. If those of you who are wondering, about this mystery of why nobody would dare oppose him with hope of winning, is simply because of his somewhat strong arm tactics and unofficial use of the Islamic militancy to ruthlessly get rid of his competition, rather than to legally and competitively fight them in politics. After all, anybody of a presidential region will have no trouble commanding respected forces to take action if the president feels threatened. In this case, the threat of his seat being taken by somebody else would have aroused such authoritative action against those brave but rather silly competitors who probably would have met a harsher fate than what God intended for them by the controlled power and stump downs of Islam Karimov during these times of his power struggle. Islam Karimov has also been suspected of money laundering charges which meant that his wife would be under house arrest for being a part of a multi-million worth of assets that's reported by BBC to have been part of a crime ring. I'm ring. Bashar al-Assad, President of Syria As we descend down from the structured heap of the worst world leaders, each are ranked by who's better than the bad. Bashar al Assad has the second name that starts with the other name for a donkey and without saying it, it should strike your minds already. Nobody would be on this list if they weren't notorious for their misleadership and for being leaders who lead in a more tyrannical way rather than in the rightful involvement of followers as well. Despite the noble face, Al, Assad is the type of man that would crush protesting attempts against his political endeavors rather than to tolerate it. This alone should tell you everything else about why he ranks at the bottom of the list of the world's worst leaders. Al-Assad has manipulated a chain of events leading to his official presidency status from tweaking constitutions to allow certain things that determine who can be head of state, he has also gained the main influence of military forces within the country etc. as he has climbed up the rankings in the military fields as well, there is no doubt that his use has commanded these people to his utmost advantage and more of it mainly for the crushing of protesters and competitors against him etc. he is notorious known for banishing certain activists long-term in prisons and more especially notorious for continuing a hardline policy that's derived from his father. Like father like son they say, say. Omar al-Bashir, Sudanese president. If you notice the common trend in these leaders' names, you will find that there is always an ass that is in linkage to their names. This is not only insulting but is a clear and well-selected outline in relation to their personalities and the deeds they've done to the people of the country they've taken oaths and vows to represent. Mr. Al-Bashir comes across as an Al-Bash type of guy and by this with a string of things which is in line of how President Al-Assad would conduct things as president. A man that's been the spotlight of an international criminal court with an issued warrant for crimes against humanity is somewhat of a say it all in terms of what we can expect from the caliber of such a president. Crimes of humanity can be spread in the heinous and horrible, inhumane acts of, rape, several girls, murder regardless of its degree, transfer of humans by force within and out of the country and torture and Al-Bashir is convicted and suspected with all of them including war crimes too. Presidents or leaders of any country or cause supposed to prevent war and not inflict it upon its people. People. Thaksin Shinawatra, former Prime Minister of Thailand. Another name on the list of the worst world leaders gives us a clue of who they are. In the case of Thaksin, Sin is the outlining word and key factor at which he is defined by and one of the things that he is guilty of. That's right. Sin to humanity, sin to the people ruled under his tyrannical leadership of cruelty. The head of state however always has the final say, in most cases. Who can we blame for following everything even if it goes against the will of morality, principles, values, beliefs and just plain respect etc. When under the spell of punishable cruelty driven leaders, everybody would be forced to just go with the flow in this case, regardless of doing the wrong thing. Crimes of humanity as discussed with linkage to al-Bashir can also be targeted directly to Thaksin Sinawatra as well with the only difference of Thaksin's way being to a slightly less harsher extent and more blatant. He displayed what we can refer to as the average millionaire's abuse of power, 
cruelty to humanity with absolute less consideration of the people involved in such a ruthless manner of his governing duration. In terms of leadership, he can be considered as one of the worst as a true leader leads by example. Thaksin on the other hand has sort of fled, ran away and imposed into self-exile, sort of like a fugitive at which if he returns to Thailand, would mean the sentence of a two-year imprisonment. This is comical for a billionaire as he is an intelligent man to have been making billions before his elective status as Prime Minister of Thailand, but he chose to run away instead of face it like a billion dollar man would. Man would. Kim Jong Un, influential leader of North Korea. We have shone a bright spotlight on the worst world leaders thus far and so now for the finale, let's give a standing ovation and global level applause to Kim Jong, and for grumping each and every other worst leader, for ranking number one on the list of the world's worst leaders and quite frankly makes the rest seem like kindergarten kids. The people of any country would leave it in the godly acclaimed hands of their elected president or top-ranking leaders to provide them the salvation of whatever needs to be done in order for a country to run smoothly which includes the people and the betterment of their lives first before personal and the beers. Kim Jong, and felt nothing to invest a substantial amount of Korean currency in the unnecessary development of nuclear weapons while the unlucky citizens and the numbers of thousands starve to work in slavery-themed conditions. This right here can be rendered as the first degree of crimes against humanity. While this may not seem like a common country circumstance of poverty and not a presidential blame, how does one explain political camps that are ruled by torturous methods sprung every day upon those who are held captive, violation of almost every basic human right that the citizens are entitled to not by a constitution but by the grace of God himself yet they've been deprived of it too by the cruelty of power-driven and selfish leaders such as Kim Jong-un. Amongst other crimes of conviction to Kim Jong fall under, rape, murder, torture, enslavement, kidnapping of innocents for uses that are rather disturbing etc. If still this isn't bad enough to make him the world's worst leader that's alive today then maybe the fact that he has been cited by a reliable source, watching a rocket launch to an unknown location probably killing thousands in the process is what would be to his entertainment.